Candace Glassmeyer here to break down all things water safety with you. Whether you are going camping or partaking in any other sort of summer activity, there's a really good chance that you are going to find yourself in or around a body of water. Whether that be a creek, a lake, a pond, or a pool. Summertime is where we often see the most water-related accidents. So what I want to discuss with you today are some skills and some suggestions that you can take with you so that you can ensure that your time in the water is as safe and fun as it can possibly be. The first tip or suggestion that I'm going to offer you is to be sure that you have an adult or an older sibling near the water to supervise your activity. Now I know some of you have probably taken swim lessons for years or you've had a family member that's taught you how to swim and you may feel that you're confident and comfortable enough in the water to handle yourself on your own. In that case, I want to applaud you for taking the time to learn how to swim and to be a little bit safer in the water, but I want to stress to all of you the importance of making sure that someone else is with you if you're going to be spending any sort of time in or around the water. Accidents happen, and in the case that they do happen, you want to be sure that someone is there to respond to that incident, whether that be jumping in to help you, whether that be calling for emergency services, whatever it may be. It's crucial that you have an adult, an older sibling, or just someone else, another person there with you so that you are not left alone in the water. The next thing that I want to discuss with you is the importance of wearing one of these bad boys, a life jacket. Now again, my folks in the crowd who have taken swim lessons and who know how to move in the water, you are probably saying, Miss Classmare, there's no need for me to wear a life jacket. If you are someone who can, again, confidently and comfortably maneuver yourself through the water, it's not a case where you need to wear this all the time. However, what I want to discuss with you all today is those places and those experiences where it is required by law for you to wear a life jacket. According to the Ohio Revised Code, they have a law that states that any child under the age of 10 wear a life jacket if they are on some sort of water vessel. So a canoe, a kayak, a jet ski, a boat. Anyone under the age of 10 is required to wear what they refer to as a PFD or a personal flotation device. Now I know many of you are over the age of 10, so you would not fall under the category of that law. But just keep in mind if you have siblings and you and your siblings are spending time on the water, just be sure that they have that PFD, that personal flotation device, that's going to keep them safe. In regards to those who are over the age of 10, there are still laws in the state of Ohio that require people wear life jackets when they are riding any sort of vessel that is being towed by a boat. So whether that's an inner tube or any sort of flotation device. Also, if you're riding on a jet ski, those are cases where the Ohio Revised Code or Ohio law states that any individual who is riding on those pieces of equipment is required to wear a life jacket. So you want to be sure that you have one nearby. And in the case that you might fall off of one of those things, you want to be sure that you have that support of a life jacket to help move you up towards the surface. Still on the topic of life jackets, it's not enough just to grab a random life jacket and put it on your body. There are certain steps that you need to take and certain things that you need to look for to ensure that the life jacket that you've chosen is the best one for you. The two main things that I'm going to talk about are the weight limit that is assigned to the jacket as well as looking for a stamp of approval from the U.S. Coast Guard. So when you flip open a life jacket, typically on the back panel or on the side panel, depending on the life jacket that you're choosing, there's going to be a label and at the top of that label there's going to be a weight range. Please be vigilant of the weight range that is listed on the label. If you do not know your current weight, check with your family. You want to be sure that whatever your current weight is rests within that weight range. Those life jackets have been specifically tested to support individuals within that limit and so if you are either too small or too large for that particular size, 
it's not going to provide you with the adequate support that you need to help keep you at the surface of the water. So first off, look for the weight limit. Second thing you want to look for when you are examining a PFD, a personal flotation device, is that it says that it's been approved by the U.S. Coast Guard. You do not want to have some sort of random piece of foam someone man manufactured in their garage. You want to be sure that the device that you are wearing and putting on your body as you go out into the water has been approved and tested to ensure that it is an adequate life-saving device or flotation device. A couple lines underneath of where you see that weight limit, you're going to see something that says U.S. Coast Guard approval date, and then there's also going to be the abbreviation USCG. If you see those two things located on your life jackets label, that is a great sign that this is a device that's going to help support you in the water. Once you've found a life jacket that fits your weight limit as well as has that U.S. Coast Guard approval, the next thing that you're going to want to do is make sure that you adequately and appropriately fasten it. The jacket that I'm wearing right now is goes on just like a vest. Once it's there, you're going to take the buckles and click them. There's going to be a strap on the side that allows you to adjust it to your body. And this one has three buckles in total to clip, so I am clipping those. Once you do that, another good test to make sure that it is going to give you that appropriate support is to lift it over your shoulders. So in this case, this is a little large for me. Your life jacket should not be able to be pulled up over your shoulders. It should snugly fit your body. It should feel like someone's hugging you tight. That way it's going to remain with you. If you get into the water, it's not going to come up here by your chin. You want to fasten those buckles, tighten them up with the straps, and then test by taking your fingers and lifting up, making sure that it's not passing over your ears. Once you have your adult supervision, as well as your properly fitted life jacket, you are good to go to enter into the water. However, what I want to stop and talk to you about really fast is what to do in the case that you see someone in the water who needs help or support. This is all going to rely back on that first idea of having adult supervision. If you see someone in the water that is having difficulty staying at the surface, having difficulty catching their breath or getting to the wall or to the edge of the pool or lake, you want to first go get an adult to help. That adult is going to be able to respond, whether that is calling for a lifeguard, calling 911, getting in the water themselves. Since you all are a little bit older, there's a second step that you can do on top of that, and that is to look for something around you that is able to provide that person with flotation support. Use those reasoning skills that you've developed in science class over the years to examine the objects around you and see which ones are going to float. Some really great examples of things that you can use are things like pool noodles like this. That person can grab onto the noodle and wrap it around themselves to help support them. You can use any sort of inflatable that is filled with air. You could use a ball, like a basketball. You could also use a life jacket. If you see an extra life jacket laying around, you can throw it into the person. The person is not going to be able to put it on securely and click the buckles and things, but they can still hug onto it and use that supportive foam to keep them lifted at the surface of the water. The idea is that you are getting that person something that they can use to help keep their face above the water so that they're able to maintain their breath. While that is happening, hopefully your adult is on the way with the help that you need. What I want to encourage you to do is remain at the ledge or remain at the side of the water. Do not jump in after the person. When a person is in crisis and in panic in the water, it's likely that their arms are going to be thrashing around. If you are to go into the water while this person is in a state of crisis or a state of panic and they see you, their first instinct is going to be to wrap their arms around you so that you are able to help keep them up at the top of the water. The issue with this is that if they are hugging their arms around you, there's a really good chance that your arms are going to be pinned to your side. That's going to leave you unable to maneuver yourself to safety, let alone that other person. Please, I urge you, even if you feel that you are a comfortable and confident swimmer, go get an adult to help you first. Look for something to throw to them second. Do not go in after them. That has the possibility to create an even bigger situation. 
The final thing that I want to talk to you about are some moves and some skills that you can use within the water to help keep you safe. The first one that I want to share with you is the back float. It's something that you may be very comfortable with. This is a great water safety skill because it allows your face to be out of the water so that you can breathe and that you can call for help. A trick with the back float is to ensure that your chin is pointed up to the sky as high as it possibly can. The movement of you lifting your chin upwards is then going to prompt your chest and your stomach to rise to the surface so that you're able to lie flat on your back. If you keep your chin tucked in towards your chest, that's going to create a motion where your body is going to sink in on itself, your chest and your stomach are going to collapse on each other, and you are going to sink. When you are doing a back flow, be sure that your chin is pointed upward and that your arms are outstretched so that you have the largest possible surface area you can have. Second to floating on your back is the idea of treading. Treading is another skill that allows your face to stay out of the water so that you can breathe and call for additional help and support. When you're treading, you need to have your whole body engaged. There's a motion that happens in your arms as well as in your legs. Treading involves first your arms sweeping in and out from your body. Imagine that you have a big piece of toast that you are spreading peanut butter or jelly on, and that is the motion that your arms are doing. As you are doing that spreading motion with your arms, you want to involve your legs as well. You need all body parts engaged to help support you and keep you lifted at the surface of the water. The motion that's happening in your legs is you are pretending that you are like a ninja and your legs are kicking out to the side. Both legs are kicking at the same time. I know in this demonstration I'm only kicking one leg just for the sake of balance, but when you are in the water, you have both arms moving in that sweeping, spreading motion and both legs kicking out to the side like a ninja. That motion is going to help to keep your face above the water. The final safety skill that I want to discuss with you is what's referred to as the elementary backstroke. This is another move that is completed on your back and again is a move that promotes breath and promotes you being able to call out for help. This is also ideal for if you are stuck in the middle of a body of water and you are trying to get yourself to the side to safety. When you are doing the elementary backstroke, just like in treading, there's motion going on in the arms as well as the legs. Elementary backstroke is also fun because it has a little rhyme or a little phrase that can assist you in remembering the moves. And that is monkey, tree, banana. Some people call it chicken, eagle, snake you choose what's best for you. When you are doing the arms for the elementary backstroke, you are going to start by bringing both hands up to your armpits, similar to a monkey scratching their armpits. Once you have the arms there, you're then going to outstretch them to make a T-shape. And then finally, you're going to bring both arms forcefully down to your side. So arms come in, imagine you're tickling your armpits, Arms go out in a T-shape, and then they smack down on the side of your legs. Your leg motion is going to involve you bringing your foot up to your knee. You're going to kick your leg out to the side. And then, similar to how the arms sweep down, your leg is going to kick down to meet your other. So leg goes up, out, around. Up out around monkey tree banana chicken eagle snake when you are moving throughout the water and you are trying to get yourself back to safety a good combination is to alternate between floating on your back and completing the elementary backstroke that way you're able to give yourself a period of time to rest while also helping to move yourself through the water. So my suggestion for you is if you find yourself in a state where you are unable to continue your natural swim, is to roll over, float on your back, take a moment to rest and breathe, and then when you're ready and you've built up stamina, begin that chicken eagle snake motion, that monkey tree banana, to help move your body closer toward your destination. So I'm hopeful this information was helpful to you. I really want to emphasize again the importance of being prepared and having the skills that you need 
to keep yourself and others safe in the water. Water can be super fun, but it also has the potential to be quite dangerous. So myself and the other adults in your life that care about you want to be sure that you're equipped with the skills that you need to be safe. If you have questions on anything that I talked about in this video, please feel free to email or message me and I'd love to answer them for you. Stay safe, enjoy your summer, goodbye.